Hi, I'm Mayor Jay Tipsher and welcome to this edition of Chandler Inside and Out. Today it's an extreme pleasure to have in studio with us Tex Earnhardt. Hopefully in the next half hour you're going to learn a lot more about Tex, about Tex's business, and just a little bit about Chandler because Tex is a lot about the history of Chandler. So Tex, thanks for being here today. Hey, it's a pleasure, Jay. I shouldn't be here. Hal, my oldest son, he went to school with you. He set this up. And if it wasn't for Hal, he's the one that's built the business where it's at today. Uh, when I started, you know, with my dad, we came out here and we became a Ford dealer September 4th, 1951. And uh, I think Chandler then was only 2,000 population. Yeah. What's the population here now? I Chandler's haven't... about 234,000. I was going to ask you that because you came here when you were about 20 from Texas. 20. Right. Came from Harlingen, Texas, and uh, I became a dealer September 4th, 1951. I'll become, I've been a dealer if I lived till September 4th, six, at 60 years ago. That's an amazing yeah. accomplishment. Well, it's, uh, it's been a great, it's been a great run when I think about it, driving here today, even though I've always lived in Chandler. Right. Never lived anywhere else except in Chandler. And I don't think a lot of people un realize that you live in Chandler. Your That's kids right. went to Chandler schools. And I live on I live in the same house for 50 years. Yeah. The kids were born right here on uh, North Queen. Remember the old hospital? Chandler Hospital. Now, wait a minute. Just Jim Babe, my baby, he was the only one because when Hal and Debbie were born, they were born in Mesa. They didn't have a hospital right. there. And that was all dirt road all the way. I can really, because you live off of McLean, McQueen, McQueen in yeah. Extreme South Chandler. Yeah. And uh, I remember when Jim Babe was born, all dirt road. We went down dirt road all the way to the ranch. Some of our citizens still think it's dirt road because it's still the two lane road. But uh, oh, it's great, it's great. You but know. you came to Chandler in '51. I know you got your dealership, but you came and you started a gas station in downtown well, Chandler. That's a, everything was glamorized. It was a glamorized gas station. It's not like today when you become a dealer, they they tell you what you got to build a building, you got to do this and that, you got to have toilets in there. Yeah. Uh, when we started, we had nothing across the street here, and uh, but I I never knew. I had no number one. I had no idea I was ever going to live here. Right. I'm from Texas, and I was I just got hung out here and uh, hung out to dry. Didn't do good the first rodeo I was at. Because you were a rodeo guy. Yeah, and uh, but I'm here, and uh, so I just kind of hung on. 1951, if I remember business, I wasn't a big businessman, so I don't right. know what. But we were only selling a car a month or two, something like that. Not a lot. Pump a lot of gas, you know, and uh, washing a lot of cars. I washed cars with just a hose across the street, right there on the gravel. Yeah, and uh, a lot different was now. And all these ranchers and farmers, they would come in. I'd watch their pickup, just one chamois, no soap, no nothing. Hmm. And they'd come across and be at the Western Tavern. They'd be having fun over there. And sometimes I have to drive them home. They drank too much, and yeah. I won't. I won't mention the names. Uh, and for the for the audience benefit, <coughs> the, the, the 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 location of your gas station and the tavern are all in downtown Chandler, right around where the city hall is today. Yeah, just up a little farther, where Serrano's is right now. That used to be the Western Tavern, right across the street. But the street was only a two-lane yeah. road. Then that was the only road to go to El Paso. It went right through Casa Grande and and we didn't have a freeway. Right. You had to go through Mesa and Tempe and Phoenix to go to Los Angeles. Right. And the uh, first trip I ever, I went to a meeting. I caught, I had to go to Phoenix, catch a Greyhound or one of those buses. I rode a bus over to a meeting. Hmm. And that's a little different than it is now. Yeah, it's a little, how did you get the dealership? Because, I mean, I know today it's really hard to get a dealership. How did you get a dealership in 1951? Because you were the youngest yeah. person to get a yeah. Ford dealership. There was a fella that had the dealership here. His name was Rhett's Laugh. And uh, he had some kind of problems, and uh, I forget how how we got involved with it. And uh, like I was telling you a while ago, anybody was breathing. Right. You were breathing. Uh, you you want to go to work? That's what it was. Right. And it was the Valley Bank. Jimmy David was the guy that 
more or less taught me everything. Forrest Tate, who was right. my friend, and he was here when we got here, and uh, we've been friends forever. And you mentioned in 51, the car business was kind of like what it was a couple of years yeah. ago, pretty much in the... I only know because, you know, when you're 20, 21 years old, I don't know what what the stock market is, and I still don't, or don't, don't even care uh, what was business. And TV was just coming on. See, when I was born and raised, we didn't even have TV. I never saw TV until uh, maybe 1946 or 47 when I went Wow. Maybe to Houston or somewhere and saw it. Right. So, I mean, things were completely different. Yeah. It was a long ways from here to Mesa. Yeah. So you were selling a couple cars. You had the gas station. You washing cars. Uh, I, You're selling cars on that lot. Well, it sounds like we're selling. We, we're not selling many because I, di I didn't know what to do. And, you know, I had to have a lot of help. And Ford yeah. would come in and tell us, you, here's what you do and here's how you do it. And uh, then... I could just sell you a car and I'd say, well, go ahead and take it, no insurance, and uh, well, I'll just sign your name for it, you know. Now we have to disclose everything. Right. The government is involved in everything that we do. It's for the protection of, of the consumer, you know. Then, hey, just take the car and hey, I'll, it, it was just completely different. It was more of a handshake deal a almost. A handshake, yeah, you didn't even need a handshake then. Now we have to. You know, just to buy a car, just right. a used car, let's say. You want to come in and buy one and pay cash for it. It's the law. I have to have you go into a room where our finance people have to disclose to you everything. Now, here's what you're getting, and here's what you're paying, right. and da-da-da-da-da, and here's... Uh, I mean, it takes a lot of time. It's very expensive. There's a lot of red tape. Oh, yeah, well, just like running this business here. Yeah. So you, back in those days, and you mentioned there was a Valley Bank, now it's called Chase, it was Valley Bank, then Bank, bank one. one. But you would actually hand, walk your customers right, right to around the, the corner, branch. Yeah. yeah, me and Forest State probably, because he was teaching me and uh, I really didn't know. I was driving a pickup, so that was, I, I thought very highly of that, but I had something to drive. And I you know nothing about the car business, but it's nice to drive one. And uh, I don't know what I was thinking about. I wasn't going to stay here. Right. And uh, the next thing I know, uh, I've been here a year, two, five, ten, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I've, I've been here uh, sixty years. At some point, you moved from the downtown location. You went a little further north well, on Arizona. Went a little farther Avenue. north, up. Started right across the street, September 4th, 1951. December the 1st, we moved up north. I can't remember what the address is. Um, and I bought from a farmer up there, I forgot, an acre or two. And he had a roping arena there. Mm -hmm. I used to rope there with him. And then I built a little small building out of proceeds because the bank wouldn't loan me any money. It's too young and no, no, they didn't know who I was or what I was. They thought it was too risky. <clears throat> yeah, outlaw. <laughs> and uh, so I built a tin shed and it's still standing today. It's the best building. Uh, it's just a, I hate 20 feet. I buy 20 feet at a time, tin roof, an aluminum roof. That building is still standing. Yeah. And the buildings we have, not not as good as this first one. Right. And I didn't have to come to the city and get any permits. You just <laughs> you just did it. <laughs> yeah. Now that's the so that's the building up north on Arizona Avenue that you guys operated out of till the yeah, till the seventies, I think. And then Ford wanted me to move. Now I'm kinda into this thing. And business is good and it got to the point where people were you know, that they need to get a car. Right. And business was good, so I, you didn't even have to know anything. Here's the only color I got, so you would take that. And uh, I was always nice. We, we gave them good service. I learned, you know, that service was the most important thing. That's what I want when I go right. somewhere. And uh, so December 1st, 1954, I moved in that little place up there. And it grew. And then Ford wanted me to move to in the Tempe area that they had it all figured out. 
there are people in Detroit where I should have been right at uh, Broadway and uh, rural, I think. That's, right. that's what they knew. Well, anyway, we bought a place right on the corner from a dairyman right. at the corner of Baseline and Rural and uh, couldn't get any financing from the Valley Bank, nobody else. So I had to get other financing. When you're young, you know, nobody wants you, you know. Yeah. Now they want me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can get what I want now, I guess. Because uh, I've been with the same bank. It was Valley Bank, Bank One. You've been consistent with yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still with the same bank. They just keep changing the name, and uh, the guys are, some of them are still there. Yeah. But yeah, they've I, been real nice to me. And uh, and I remember when you opened that facility. It was the early 70s? or Yeah, 72 or 3. Right. And uh, we had a good run there for 30-some years. And uh, then Hal was involved with the business. And that's your son. You got both, both of your sons work in the business. Uh, Hal came in, I, you'd have to ask him when he got there. And uh, when he got there, smart, I just had him upstairs with me. And uh, we've always been together. Right. And uh, I've just leaning on him here. This is the way I do it. Uh, but he'd already been to school, college, and uh, right. And he liked the business, so he took off from there. And then his brother is six or seven years younger, and he brought him in. And uh, so it's just been all the Earnhardts. We all just work. And you all get along, and you've got your uh, grandkids. I've in there. never had an argument with my boys, never. Yeah. I never will, and uh, my grandsons either. Uh, I just don't believe in arguing, uh, and I think uh, you got to have somebody that you can work with. And it's nice right. to have your family, and uh, we have a lot of nepotism. I don't even know how many kids. I think we have. I'd have to call my wife. We've got 17 or 18 <laughs> grandkids, which are most of them great grandkids, and uh, you know we just don't have any problems. And I grew up with your kids. They went to Chandler schools when I was going. I went with right. uh, Debbie and Hal. Jim Babe was a right, right. You're right little, there with all of them. A little younger and watched your dealerships grow and you know prosper. And actually watched Earnhardt's come for full circle. You left Chandler. You had that good location in uh, Tempe, and then yeah, but I still had this store here. Yeah. So I've never left. Uh, I've always lived in Chandler. Always, right. Th this is where I've always lived. And it's a great, great town. I don't know anything else. Uh, had a buddy of mine down in South Texas call me the other day. He's my age, and uh, he called me a traitor. <laughs> he said, you know, we gave you your name and taught you how to ride and all this stuff. And why aren't you coming back home? <laughs> I said, yeah, I got too much out of here. I'll come down and visit with you, you know. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about, you're probably... You got a lot of claims to fame, but I don't know what they are. But Tell the, me. Well, one of them is the phrase "that ain't no bull," and right. I want to. I kind of remember that when I was a kid, you doing a commercial. But I'm gonna let you tell the story about how did we come up with the best that ain't I no can bull. remember. We had a bull that we had uh, changed him into a steer. And that's when we were doing commercials with the old camera. They came out, and I think it was Channel 5. They just had a deal like this, and it was at the ranch, and you wouldn't be able to see it. Like, you know, you can see this stuff right now that they do. Right. And so it would be two or three days to see what it was. And I pretty well remember my neighbor, the only neighbor I had lived up the road, Denton Little. He'd lived there for years before I did. And, uh, in fact, he just passed away about a year ago. Great guy. And uh, I think he was asking me, Texas, uh, is that this bull or something that I had? And I'm sitting on him. And I said, no, this ain't no bull. I mean, just that, that's how it started because he wasn't a bull. He looks like a bull, but Wasn't. he'd been transferred into a steer. Right. And... Uh, so that's how that happened, best I know. And I was, was out of town or something, and I came back, and I was probably having a cup of coffee down here in one of the coffee shops. And uh, somebody said, what's this no bull stuff? And 
it's funny how no bull just seemed to fit. Yeah. And uh, I've always been the no bull guy. And uh, we were in an agricultural town. Oh yeah, that's right. Farmers, ranchers, and uh, it's become a, a logo. It's been become a trademark. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you one thing. Uh, you know, I used to drive car pickups, especially a convertible. And when Debbie was in school, high school out here, and uh, well, she went. They didn't have Hamilton. They had right down here. Chandler, the, the main high Chandler school. school. And uh, kids would see me on the bull, or they'd see a picture or me driving through town with the big horns on the front. And of course, they'd say, "Oh, we saw your dad." And she'd tell me, <laughs> "Dad, please don't do that." Oh, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> All the kids, and uh, but I, what am I going to do? You know, that's yeah. how we make a living. That's how I bought milk. Yeah. And uh, so it's, and I told the boys, you know, when I'm dead, hell, you do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But it seems it doesn't annoy anybody. No. It's uh, it doesn't offend anybody at all. And uh, it's just like, like no bull, no toro. Is, it means nothing in Spanish. There, there's no way to, yeah. that means nothing in Spanish. But in English, you know, like people say, um, you're telling something that's not true. Well, that ain't no bull. So it's really a figure of speech or when I'm riding one of them big, you know, animals, yeah. where it started. And you decided, that's okay. It's just been fun. And you decided, I'm going to do this on my commercial. And I remember you on your commercials. It was during the evening, like during the Tonight Show or something in yeah. the 60s. And you had Dave Sabe on there with you. Oh, yeah. I, I bought, he, I wish he, sh he should be here. I bought hundreds and hundreds of pair of boots. I bought hundreds of, we gave boots away, I gave hats away, I used to give shotguns away. That's for all this time. And, right. And I bought them from Dave. Because okay. Dave's got a basement full of, you know, he's got ammunition and everything, always have. Right. And uh, he's a great, great guy and uh, he's a great hunter and fisherman, that's all he does. And all I ever did was work. You did a good job of it too. Yeah. So I've you started doing that commercial, you started doing the no bull and it's... And it's, it just kind of, and so two or three years ago, we just kind of got off the air because the way the economy was, our, we used to sell this many cars and had this many people. And all of a sudden we shrank down to this size. We're selling this many cars and we got this many people. So then we, we're we reading the paper and TV. We see a little uptick, we think. Right. And then the uptick will go down. Right. Uh, the housing industry is what is really holding back the state of Arizona. That's right. our opinion. Uh, and how long it's going to take for that thing to ever settle in because we could sell. Right. Not only us, but it, the rest of the car dealers. You can't get them financed. People have just walked off and they've ruined their credit and now they can't, they can't buy. Do you feel like we're on an, I mean, I, I kind of get the feeling we're on a little bit of an uptick, but you're right. The housing thing has kind of driven us for so many years and it's so much in the tank. Yeah. It's kind of leveled off and maybe creeping up a little, but. I, I can't tell. Uh, you could ask Hal, he measures all that stuff all the time, and uh, but we'll have a few good days, and then boom, yeah, like nothing. Yeah. And you know, we have big stores, and you know, we still have to pay those you know, fixed expenses there. You can't change that. So you've grown from you to how many employees does it work for Earnhardt today? Uh, right around here, and probably got over a thousand right here. Right. And, and then we have stores other than here. You have nine dealerships. You're selling how many brands out of those dealerships? Oh golly, Jay, I don't know. I'd have to. Yeah. I got to call Hal or Jim Babe or somebody to find yeah. out. We and, got them all, I think. And I, I was going to ask you how involved you are in the day-to-day -day business, but I know you are so humble. You're not going to say you're that involved. But I, I know whenever I was taking my wife's car in the last year and a half down to Earnhardt, or I went to meet with Larry, who works for you, or yeah. I it was buying a car from you. It never failed. I would see you in the morning, walking early in the morning, walking into your dealership sure. with your briefcase, which is your saddlebag. Right. You have a work ethic that is probably unparalleled. Well, you know what? I've done it all my life. Uh, I, I'm there Sundays, Saturday, every day. I don't know what else to do. When you're raised on a ranch and, uh, you know, you're used to getting up, you got chores to do. Mm -hmm. And then I wound up, this was my chore. And... Uh, I used to detail my own cars, Yeah. one used car at a time. Yeah. And uh, I still drive a used car. 
I thought I would set, you know, a standard for the kids. Right. That standard didn't work. They've never <laughs> been a used car. You got the used car. <coughs> the saddlebag is always interesting because I see you in the dealership. I saw you there about. I carried that friend of mine, Larry Mahan, a world champion. Yeah, heard of rodeo. I man. was flying with him up in uh, eastern Montana, and he didn't do good. But they gave him somebody had made these saddlebags, and when we got in the plane, he, said, you know, he was upset. I need the money. I don't need a. Set. And uh, I said, give them to me then. Yeah, they're yours. I've carried them ever since then. Yeah. That's I've your briefcase, them. isn't it? Well, yeah, I'm just like an old woman. I got everything in the world. Nothing of value. You could have everything in there and you'd find nothing. Yeah. But I, I, I get a kick out of it. But yeah, I would run into you into your dealerships pretty much without fail whenever I go in there. Yeah, well, I'm there every day and because we have a no bull restaurant right there, and that's what it's called. And I sit right there. That's the best office I can have because. People are in there milling around, getting service cars, and every once in a while somebody wants to come up and talk to me about they're unhappy. Mm -hmm. And that's very simple. All I say, what does it take you to make you happy? We make a lot of mistakes. We're not perfect. And uh, people like to see me there, or right. they like to see one of the boys there. Because, you know, we all have the same attitude. We're going to fix it for you. Sure, we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's that's how we keep our business going. It's uh, it's re it's repeat business. It's like if I just came in here and just met you, and I said, Jay, you know, I just walked in. I got a bad toothache, and you say, Well, here, let me. I got a doctor down there. Right. Go down and see Doctor So and So. I'm going to go in. If that mm -hmm. wants to go ahead and do it, it's the referral that still makes our business. Yeah. And we're still selling third third generation, fourth generations. Right. But they started with here because maybe we took care of somebody the right way. We're not perfect, uh, but I've tried to do it the right way. I know what I expect right. in life. And uh, nice people finish first, that's all. Customer service, that's, Absolutely. Your, that's your number one motto. Absolutely, you know, nobody wants to go to a doctor, take time, nobody wants to bring their car in. And then of all things, you wait or come back the next day and the thing is not fixed. Right. And we make those mistakes and uh, they don't happen on purpose. I hope they don't. And we keep right. working on it, working on you know, we'd like to be 100%. We'll never get to 100%. We keep working towards it, that's all. And I think people do like running into you or Hal or Jim or oh, yeah. in, in, in seeing you. Oh yeah, there, when the boys walk downstairs, oh yeah, that's your, yeah, shake hands with him or him. Yeah. And uh, they like that. Yeah. It's that country atmosphere. This is not like being in Beverly Hills. And uh, yeah. You know, we still have a lot of farmers here, and uh, even though a lot of the farms are gone, we got some right. ranchers out here, and uh, got some good people, all kinds of people. It serves Until you. we even have them, those people, they like to come in, you know, look, look at that big building that you guys brought over here. Yeah, it, it's nice. We're, we're happy they're here, and I'm glad to hear they're buying cars oh, in Chandler, because yeah. we were real happy when you came back and after you moved out of Tempe, you re you located the, the new Ford dealership in Chandler, which That's was right. great. It was full, right. full circle. That's right. Did you ever dream, I, I mean, I read something that you've sold, your dealerships, your company has sold over a million cars mm -hmm. since I 51. I would imagine, yeah, I think so. That's a, that's a lot of cars. I can't remember them. <laughs> well, we're, we're glad you did and we're glad you're, you're selling them. What are some of the bigger changes in the industry today versus in 51 when you started? The new vehicles, I mean, they are so expensive. First pickup I sold across the street there, I think was about $1,090. That was just a three-speed pickup. You didn't have side view mirrors. You didn't have padded dashboard, no backup lights. I mean, just plain vanilla, yeah. but it would run from here to there. No radio, no heater, of course. Yeah. And uh, now all these cars come with all the safety equipment seat belts and of course you know it all costs a lot of money and uh i would have to ask the boys our average selling price on a new car you know medium is 20 25,000 there's some you want one with nothing on it no refrigeration and years ago you know we didn't have mm -hmm. refrigeration that was a joke i remember those days <laughs> hey when we started selling refrigeration First, they had them coming out of the, the trunk and blew out over the back seat. Well, that didn't work. Then they brought it up over, over the 
the front right here. That's where the cold air was blowing in to where the heat would come up. Right. That didn't work because the sun coming in on the heat and uh, and people all wanted refrigeration and uh, now they've got it. Refrigeration, you can hang beep in, in your cars now. Yeah, they, they Oh, they're perfect. They I work. mean, they, they get too cold. You can yeah. get them too cold. We have people come in complaining their car is too cold. We need to be able to set it down a little bit for them. You turned 80 in de December. December. Yes, sir. But you, I've known you for years. You're all, you're used to jog till the knees gave out. But you still <laughs> keep a very good physical fitness reg re regime, don't you? Well, I think so. I work out every day, and I always have. I just I enjoy it, and it's been a part of my life. I think it for me. Right. I want to feel good, and uh, I just don't have any health problems. Right. You swim. You walk. Yeah. yeah. You, do you still rodeo? Yeah, I rode for the hell all the time. Wow. That's something. I know uh, one, one question I wanted to ask you is, you know, a lot of young people, number one advice maybe for young people going into business today, because <coughs> it is a tough economy <coughs> now. And mm. You're a self-made person. You, you started this company and very successful. Well, what, not self-made. You know, I hate that because if it wasn't for when I got here, there was Forrest Tate, there was this guy and there, this lady or who, you know, it's always a combination right. of things. and. Uh, so it's not me, it's it's right. always all of us that did it. And uh, I tell our people, that, you know, to be sex successful in life, you can't like what you're doing. I think you gotta be passionate about it. See, you don't have to be a mayor, you've been here, you left, you came back, you were the governor, the senator, you've been everything, but you love this or you wouldn't be here. Right. That's and I mean, it fits you and that's, you don't wanna go to bed at night, you can't wait to get up here and, and get this thing stirring, whatever you're doing. Well, that's, that's our business. Right. It's a tough business, but your business is tough here. It's not easy. Lots sure. of problems every day. And we have them, but all in all, it's a great business. And if I could start over again, I would be in the car business. And if you asked Hal or Jim Babe or, you know, our right. people, yeah, we have bad days, but then we have more good days than we do bad days. So I think that, that offsets it. And, yeah. you know, <clears throat> I think all you get out of life, if you got good health, then yeah. business is really great. Right. Nope. But how many people you know that just, they, they've got a lot of health problems, they, they can't make anything happen. Well, I would ask you more questions, but we run out of time. I no, wanna... no, I want to be here for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring you back <clears throat> with Hal. Next... Yeah, bring Hal. That, that's the little fellow that should be there. Yeah. I thank you for coming hey, out today, Hey, Jay, it's Tex. a pleasure. Anything I can ever do for you or the... City of Chandler, I owe her everything. I to, you know, this is like our birthplace yep. for starting in the car business. We're still in the car business here. And uh, I mean, I would do it all over again. Thank you. You betcha. Thank you, Jay. I'm Mayor Jay Tipsherney. You've been watching Chandler Inside and Out. Our special guest today was Tex Earnhardt. I hope you enjoyed the show. And until I see you again, take care and be safe.